Welcome to the Linguava podcast, The Invisible Profession, where we give you tools, tips, and resources in medical interpretation and translation that help bring to life our profession and ultimately help improve health outcomes for the limited English proficient and deaf and hard of hearing community. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for, for being here with us today. It is an honor and, and a pleasure to, to be here with Izzy Meda, who is the executive director at Familias in Acción. Izzy, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, David. Super excited about this. And Izzy is also a, a good dear friend of mine that goes back, gosh, has it been, what, 13, 14 years now? Yeah, absolutely. I think wow. it's been that long. I have a lot of memory. A lot of great memories and time sure flies. So tell us, Izzy, in your role there at Familias in Acción, how long have you been there and what is the main mission of Familias in Acción? Well, actually, I just completed my fourth year here as executive director of Familias in Acción. It's been an incredible ride for me as executive director of a health organization going through two years of a health crisis, a global pandemic. And the mission of Familias in Acción really is to, to strengthen the health of Latinos here in Oregon. It is an incredible mission because every word in that mission was thought out. We use the word, for example, strengthen the health because our communities are strong and our communities are healthy in a certain way. And we want to make sure that we come in as an organization and enhance or strengthen the power and what Latinos really bring to the sector. Such a powerful mission and message to the Latino community. As I look at your career, Izzy, one of the things that stands out to me is the work that you've done, whether it's in the education sector, whether it's in home lending, uh, and now in Familias en Acción, it's been about equity and bringing that equity and spreading it and expanding that throughout communities that are more marginalized. In the healthcare system today, what are some of the gaps that, that you see in healthcare for the Latino community? And if you could also touch on what role does language access play in that? You know, what's really funny is that we really talk about gaps, right? Where, where you think that maybe we can come in and, and, and fill those gaps or bridge those gaps. But if I've really learned anything over the last four years here is that the whole system really needs to be redone, honestly. It's, it's really hard to be able to come into a, a giant system that has been operating against Latinos and BIPOC communities for such a long time and then want to simply create some projects that might fill those gaps. And to be honest with you, that's not enough. If we've learned anything over the last two years specifically is that the pandemic has really either unveiled or highlighted more so a lot of the racial disparities that exist within our health system. And yes, language access is one of them and played a huge role during the COVID-19 pandemic or at the height of the pandemics because we're still going through it. And language access is still an issue. It's not stopped. And it's not about how do we go in and fill those gaps, meaning perhaps solutions like how do we translate these documents, but rather how can we create documents from the very beginning that are in Spanish, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, it's doing it all over. It's not filling in that gap. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head and I love how you worded that. If let's let's not just fill in a gap. Let's go back to the the source. Let's look at when things are being built and and created. And that's really where language access needs to be in the forefront of, of the conversation as well. And I know this is an important moment here for you guys at Familias Acción. You have your annual conference coming up, and I encourage everyone to check that out. If you haven't attended in the past, there's anywhere from what 400 to 500 attendees attended last year. And I think on part to break that this year, give us a little sentence or two on the conference for this year and why is it a must attend? This year, the Latino Health Equity Conference is focusing on highlighting the importance of community health workers and community-based organizations and really taking everything that we've learned over the last two years and the role that they play and that the role that they need to play in the healthcare system is really important we would not have been able to achieve the level of success, whatever that looks like, in the Latino community with either education and COVID-19, on vaccinations, on information. It, we would not have been able to get where we are without community health workers and without community-based organizations. And the state and public health authorities are understanding and realizing that. And I think that we're really entering this sort of kind of renaissance of healthcare 
where they're really understanding that they need to work with community and that they need to work with community-based organization to be able to reach these families that have been left behind. Our conferences, at one point, it was very unique, meaning that it was the only bilingual conference that addressed Latino health equity. And we've had many partners. This is our 13th annual, and we've had partners that support us funding-wise every year. But our conference really wouldn't be able to be bilingual if it wasn't for the support the lingua that's able to provide. There is something unique to be able to come and, and learn and converse in your native language. And, and I believe that to be powerful, both healthcare and money. And you mentioned that I was a, a, a loan officer. Like these are two things that you really want to address in your own language. I want to be able to understand. I want to be able to learn and know what's going on. And so we really think that being able to provide interpretation and keeping a bilingual conference as a Latino organization is important to us. So thank you so much, Nguava. It's a real honor to be able to be there, Izzy, and help provide the language access to the community. For, for those individuals who are hearing about Feminism Action, maybe for the first time, they're going, wow, what an incredible mission. I'd love to be able to be, be a part of it. What avenues or, or guidance can you give them if, if people want to be able to support or, or volunteer or donate? Where can they start? Something that I've learned in my tenure here at the Mias and Action is, is and I think a lot of folks have taken a, a look inward over the last two years for sure. And I learned a lot about my own privileges and how I can use them to really support and I guess support and bring them in service of community. And so I believe that really recognizing like what are the privileges that I have and being able to use those to help and support community is important, whether I speak English, whether I have an education, whether I understand the health system or the transportation system or the education system, like there are things and knowledge that you have that you're able to bring and help folks. Thank you, Izzy, that's so powerful and, and such a huge need. Again, for those of you who are, are attending, we'll see you at the conference. And for those who haven't yet registered, Izzy, what's the, the best way they can do that on, on your website? And when's the cutoff for registration? Totally. You can register for our conference up until the day of or the morning of, which is June 9th. We have a whole day of virtual content, and we're hoping to have an in-person component at the convention center on June 10th. So go to latinohealthequity.org is our conference website you'll be able to navigate to register and access our agenda for the day. Excellent. Well, hopefully you all will be able to join us there and it will be an honor to, to serve you there as well. So thank you so much for, for joining us today, Izzy. Thank you so much for having me, David. I really appreciate what you and Lingwaba do. Uh, th thank you, Izzy. <laughs>